Hello. My story begins at the end, if there is an end. I've been consigned to the fourth circle of hell. If you've ever read Dante's Inferno, or even if not, you might remember that it punishes greed. Misers and spenders toil opposite sides of the circle, rolling huge bags of money with their chests until it crash into one another. The center that falls to the ground first is the loser, who gets whipped by a demon until they stand back up and try again. The winner receives one gold coin, tradable for one minute's rest before they face their next opponent. You might not think there is any rest where we are, but it exists to remind us of what we're missing before our torment begins anew. I don't know how long I've been here. I almost don't care. Time is elastic in this place, stretching as far into the past, present, and future as a sunset on the beach. The grunts and screams of my fellow damned ring in my ears. I block them out as best I can. There may be rest in this godforsaken place, but no, there is no empathy. That's why I'm suffering now. Still, can you blame me for looking out for number one? I worked 70 hours a week at a hospital janitor to make ends meet. Let me tell you, you haven't seen shit until you've seen literal shit all over your, the place. People are disgusting. They do disgusting things when you're not looking. Like stuffing dirty diapers and paper towels down the toilet. Haven't they heard of garbage cans? I had to empty those. They were just as gross. I should have earned a fortune, but of course I didn't. After taxes, my take-home pay was shit too. Another fighter. Another miser. I just my chest forward as hard as I can and push. My bag of loot smashes into his. He stumbles in the muddy ground. A demon is on him in a flash, beating him with a braided whip. He howls in agony, struggling to get up, and falls again. After enduring another lash, the hoarder scrambles to his feet and shoves his way past me. The demon hands me a doubloon. I could save it and earn more coins for more rest. However, I'm not allowed to keep any more than I can carry in holy pockets of my rags. I give it back. 60 seconds to catch my breath. 60 seconds to reassess my existence. A minute later lasts an eternity here. I remember one chilly Friday in October. I was eating lunch in the cafeteria as I usually did. Rain drooled down the nearest window pane, obscuring my view of the parking lot. Fluorescent lights hummed overhead. I didn't have much of an appetite for chicken tenders and potato wedges, but I needed protein and carbs to get me through the rest of the day. The food was hot, if a bit bland. I chewed it mechanically, reviewing my morning. Two of our toilets overflowed. Piss, shit, and a gigantic wad of soggy toilet paper littered the floor and leaked into nearby stalls. The creators of this chaos fled the scene. I wasn't happy. Neither was my supervisor, who objected to my use of colorful language when he entered the restroom. Like he'd never heard the word fuck before. He wrote me up, and I got even angrier. That was my second reprimand in two weeks. One more, my pay would get docked. I couldn't afford that. Not with the rent due in my car in the shop. Someone had left the day's newspaper on my nearby table. I went and picked it up. They had better opportunities for a college grad majoring in computer science. However, entry-level texts here were everywhere. I had 40k in study student loans to pay off. The gig kept me hanging on by the skin of my teeth. The classifieds offered the usual jobs, truck drivers, CNA, Wait staff, etc. And an ad caught my eye. Background of stars and a planet with the slogan Gateway Travel. It's out of this world. Cheesy, I know, but it made me smile. I needed something to cheer me up on that dreary day. I checked out the place's address and a phone number. It wasn't that far from the hospital. I made a deal with myself. If the rain stopped by the time I took my afternoon break, I'd leave early and scope the gateway travel out. If not, I'd keep plugging away and forget all about it. I'd like to think whether my 
Weather sealed my fate, but in hell, I know better. The rain had turned to cold mist by the time three o'clock rolled around. I decided I needed to take the rest of the day off. Again, my boss wasn't pleased, but I didn't give a fuck. He wasn't the one who gotten down and dirty. Speaking of which, I had to dodge several puddles on the way to the destination. It was located in a strip mall next to a Chinese restaurant across the street from a shop called Cinderella's Curios. I smirked at the cutesy name, but had no intention of going there. The sign, the door to the gateway travel, read open. The place was small and unassuming, with travel brochures all over the walls, most of them typical tropical paradise, Hawaii, Fiji, Jamaica, the Bahamas, there were several showing national parks, too. I'd never gone to any of those places. Odds were I never would. But that didn't stop me from approaching the gorgeous receptionist. Hey, I said. I, uh, looking to go on a vacation. Then you've come to the right place, she smiled with a perfectly white teeth. Welcome to Gateway Travel. I'm Rachel. I'll tell you my boss you're here. She pushed a button in the intercom and did just that. Please, have a seat. It'll be a few minutes. I sat down admiring the view of her cleavage. Rachel clear, cleared her throat. Excuse me, my eyes up here. Sorry, she sounded pissed. But when she winked at me, my insides got all hot. I whipped up my phone and looked to see if I had any new texts. None. I was about to check my Instagram feed when a man in business suit approached me. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Pudos. How may I help you today? Hi, I'm looking to get away from it all. Do you have anywhere special in mind? How about Mars or the moon? Those are less remote than the locations you're advertising. Nope, just somewhere far from this shitty, uh, city. I understand. What do you enjoy doing when you're away? I've never been away. Don't know? I relax, I guess. Veg out in front of the TV? You can do that at home. How about something a little more exciting? I run a casino you might have heard of. Pluto's Palazzo. Oh, uh, hard pass. I don't gamble. You don't have to. There are also shows you might find entertaining. I coughed. Sounds great, but I don't have any money right now. I'm offering a complimentary voucher. Good for tomorrow only. Oh yeah, I'm still broke. The buffet is excellent. The thought of the food barely appealed. Thanks, but no thanks. How about I sweeten the deal? $200 compared to your tab. Seriously? Seriously, sir. You know what? You just made my day. It was true. The man was highly amusing in his rush to offer me free stuff. Nice place you've got here. I wish you luck, but I've got to go. You're 28, nothing to show you for yourself. You're a bachelor degree, but $40,000 in the hole. You don't gamble, not because you don't like it or because it's wrong, but because you're scared of digging even deeper. You hate your job and wish your supervisor would go to hell. I can arrange that. What? No one can. You're some kind of scammer, aren't you? No. The word sent shivers up and down my spine. I can make you a very rich man. That's my domain. I am Plutos, the mythological god of wealth. Okay, you're also insane. I'm out of here. I stood up, then froze. He held the voucher out to me. I stared at it. See if I'm as good as my word. Come tomorrow to the local riverboat. The address is listed here. I should have torn that voucher up. I took it and put it in my pocket instead. Good man. Mr. Plotos turned and left. Rachel waited for me to show myself out. I did, but not before asking for her number. To my surprise, she gave it. I wish I could tell you that I came to my senses as soon as I got home. However, the thought there were no home ah, there was no harm in going to Pluto's place and seeing the voucher was genuine. If it was fake, 
I'd lose nothing. If it was real, what could I gain? Curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. Saturday. My official day off was as bright and clear as Friday had been gray and miserable. Jogging down the riverboat at a brisk fall air was a joy. A bouncer greeted me at the top of its gangplank. I handed the voucher over and he gave me a curt nod. How many other folks have gotten one of these? The casino was hella crowded. People sat at banks of noisy slot and video poker machines. Mindlessly pushing buttons and or waiting for the autoplay feature to finish. Servers brought drinks, which may or may not have been free. No one was at the roulette wheel, kino boards, blackjack, or poker tables. Which I thought was odd. Maybe they'd been active at night? I went to one of the vacant devices. It hungrily sucked my dollar into a slot, then showed several rows of digital symbols. I pushed play. The symbol spun and spun. I realized I had a chance of winning on any one of the displayed rows. Unfortunately, none of the sevens, cherries, and bars ended up matching. Not even two. The machine played its loser theme. Womp womp. And reset itself. So much for excitement. I vowed that I wasn't going to lose one more cent to that one-armed bandit. As I stood up and got ready to leave, the riverboat... A cute cocktail waitress approached and asked if I wanted to drink. Sure, I enjoyed alcohol, but didn't want to get drunk at what Tom was it anyways. My phone didn't get any reception, so I couldn't tell. There was also no clocks anywhere. If the head of the gateway travel was right, I had 200 bucks on my voucher. Great, but what else could I do besides feed that monster uh, machines? There you are. Richard Potos, wearing a snazzy red suit and black bow tie, came up to me. I've been looking for you everywhere. Let me see your voucher. I offered it to him. He scanned it with something that looked like a laser pointer. Congratulations. You're the lucky winner of the stay in my VIP round lounge. Whatever you wish is my command. And everything is free. Drinks, games, girls, and so on. Girls? Creme de la creme. Or, if you prefer the company of gentlemen. Nah, I'm straight. How long can I stay in the lounge? Three hours. Like I said, you're very fortunate. Putos led the way through the maze of occupied machines, empty table games. The riverboat seemed way bigger on the inside than the outside. Maybe that's because I could barely see the dim ambient lighting. Another piece of hired machine. Muscle greeted us at the door of the VIP lounge. Hey, boss. He said, glared at me. Password, asshole. Putos answered something that wasn't in English. Lucrum super omnia. Give him your voucher, Max. He'll keep it until your session is complete. I obeyed. The uh, bouncer pushed a code to the door's keypad, and it clicked open. Unlike the rest of the casino... The VIP lounge was brightly lit, with velvet furniture and crystal chandeliers. Very classy, but the female server's outfits left nothing to the imagination. G-strings and tassels. I swallowed so hard it hurt. Hi, what would you like? One of them asked, purs pursing her full red lips. I most said you, but I took a deep breath instead and said, I never got my club soda. How about a real drink? It's five o'clock somewhere. I smiled and shrugged. Eh, what the hell. I'll have a double on the rocks. It tasted so good going down the burn on my throat, the easy which, with which the liquid flowed into my stomach, the aftertaste. What kind of bourbon was it? Not the kind I usually bought. This was top shelf, maybe off the shelf. After that, things got a little blurry. The waitresses brought me whores de war including stuffed mushrooms, chicken sautés. It was all scrumptious. I couldn't stop stuffing my face. Asked for another double. I heard the words lap dance and free. I obliged. If this was heaven, I never wanted to get off the boat. 
In the corner of my eye, I spotted Putos. Having a good time, he asked. The best. Thanks for bringing me here. My pleasure. At the Pizarra Palazzo, unlike other casinos, luck favors the luckless. I knew you were a winner the first time I met you in Gateway Travel. Let's talk business. I blinked. What? This way, he beckoned me with a finger. I tried to stand up, but my legs wobbled like crazy. I plopped back down in the velvet chair. He grabbed my hand. His felt like stone. Disgust swept through me. Did Putas have bad arthritis? Once he yanked me to my feet, I followed him to his office. You know the kind I'm talking about, right? The huge wooden desk polished to a mirror shine with a nameplate. Persian rug on the floor. Real potted plant in the corner. Bookshelves lining the back wall. I wonder if there was a sa safe behind them. No, said Plotos. I jumped back. He had read my mind. Sit down. I practically fell into the chair. Hardwood instead of velvet with flimsy cushion. You can call me Rich. Uh, hey Rich. Now that we're acquainted, I'll get to the point. I need a partner. Someone who pre appreciates the finer things and hates it when circumstances get in their way. Someone hung hungry to improve their lot in life. Most importantly, someone who hates losing. Rich tipped his fingers into a pyramid shape. Do you? Hell yeah. In my lines of work, I face much competition. There are many other casinos and travel agencies in the area. I'm looking to expand. Name recognition and branding are everything. But so far, I've kept a low profile. That needs to change. You are skilled across several social media platforms, yes? I nod. Good. You'll help me increase my company's visibility with and banish trolls and naysayers. Right. You'll also learn to the trade of money management, which isn't difficult if you apply yourself. Stocks, bonds, hedge funds, I own them all. You'll receive a tidy share of the profits. Everything else you want will come along with it. Like more strippers and booze? Like a nice house and maybe some servants? If you so desire. Three things remain. What of your job at the hospital? <laughs> Fuck it. Someone else can clean up people's shit for a living. I'm all in. What of your current boss? Do you still wish him confined to a pits of hell? Mm-hmm. The sooner the better. I hope he has a heart attack or a stroke. Harboring hatred in your heart can bring one in on all that stress. I don't care. He used and abused me at work long enough. Understood. Third, the price for failure in our partnership is high. Are you willing to assume the ultimate risk, your soul against burning desires for wealth? I don't think there is such a thing as a soul, but if you want to put it that way, yeah. For some reason, I couldn't stop trembling. Then welcome aboard, Plotos. And Rainer. It has a nice ring to it. I agreed and shook hands, and his felt like a stone slab once again. He explained the password to the VIP lounge, which soon became my moda, motto. Lucrum Super Omnia. Profit above all. I quit my job, but under Puto's mentorship, I made a lot more money and had a lot of less anxiety. I was able to pay off my student loans. Rachel, the receptionist, and I started dating too. This progressed into the most wonderful relationship I have ever had. When I asked her to marry me, she said yes without hesitation. Life was great. It got even more so when Rachel told me she was pregnant. I refused to admit that I was living in a house of cards. Putos called me into his office on my third anniversary of meeting him. Have a seat. This time, I did not fall into the chair. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on your progress. I've seen quick st studies, but the business and finance suites you like water suits a duck. You've done a magnificent job managing my portfolio. Second, I hear you're about to become a father. Would you like a cigar? The finest from Havana. I passed. 
I didn't smoke. Oh, well. Next thing I have to tell you is quite personal on my part. I lean forward. Go ahead. Puto coughed into his sleeve. As I told you at Gateway Travel, I'm something more than immortal. I'm a god, but not the omnipotent or omniscient kind. If I were, I'd have figured out the problem of mortality. I haven't yet. I only know it's stopgag measure to hold off death. In short, I need a new body. I trembled all over, as I had before. You need me. That's why you picked me up. I'm young and strong and 31. I can give you a nice long life. Indeed, you can. But I was thinking of someone much younger. You want my child? Putas pointed an index finger at me like a gun. Bingo! No way, I'll never give him to you. Or her. I started breathing hard. I don't think you understand. If you refuse me now, it'll be as if you, you always had. Like if you got gone to Gateway Travel and turned down my casino voucher. However, I can't rewind time. All I can do is cancel our contract and impose a penalty. The good things you have right now will disappear. Your career, your mansion, your employees, your wealth, your portfolio... Everything. All gone for good. Rachel too, po Rachel too? Podos nodded. That can't be. She loves me and won't leave me. She'll do as I say. We entered into a lesser arrangement since she works as my receptionist instead of my financier. But she's still responsible for upholding it. What did my wife want? To pay off her student loans. Lo and behold, I was disappointed in her lack of ambition. But I gave her what she wanted. Also, free travel. He grinned with a new set of teeth. Teeth that had pointy, points. I never noticed he had dentures before. So, whether I say yes or no, you're still going to take my kid? Another nod. If you choose to give him up voluntarily, so much be the better life. You'll join the ranks of the multimillionaires. If not... I'm afraid penalty is joining my ranks and damned on my way home plane. My travel agency is only a portal. I rule the fourth circle of hell. Words fell out of my mouth that I regret every si single moment and I'm here. Make me a billionaire instead and we have a deal. Your wife will have to agree with these terms. She is the child's mother. Don't worry. Doubt flashed through my mind. She was so excited about her future bundle of joy that I was sure nothing could make her happier. Not even a million dollars. I'll convince her. You must. Otherwise, this new contract is null and void along with the old one. My mouth fell, mouth fell open. Puto shrugged. I told you the risks were high. When I got home, Rachel and I had the biggest fight of our two and a half year marriage. She said she'd rather die than give our son to... Or daughter to Pluto's. I pointed out that she'd bargain with him too. Why hadn't he approached her? Rachel said he might. She had an appointment with him the next day. I told her not to go. She said she had free will and could do as she pleased. She also said that if this new deal was legit, she'd give anything to stop it, even her own soul. You'd rather go to hell than save yourself and everything we've gained so far? Rachel's eyes cheered up. Sacrifice is what parents make for their children. She stunned me with this statement. So simple, so true, so eternally binding. The next day, we went to see Putos together. He granted us three, million, three more years as billionaires. Although we spent our money hand over fist, we donated a ton of, to charitable causes. We also got to know... Our adorable son, whom we named Caden. We arranged for his adoption by mutual friends of ours. They didn't understand why we'd give him up. We told them that we'd uh, be going around the world in a luxurious multi-year cruise arranged through Gateway Travels, and I needed someone to take care of him. Selfish, 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 our friend grumbled. Never mind, I'll raise him to be a good boy who cares about others and doesn't let money get in the way. Those words stung, but not as much as the truth. 
On December 31st of the third year, Rachel and I went to Gateway one last time. Greetings, said Pudos, his skin looking like it would swag off his bones, just like a cooked Thanksgiving turkey. I see you haven't brought whom I seek. No, and we never will, I squared my shoulders, squeezed Rachel's hands. Then you'll both accompany me to the emergency exit of the rear of the facility, which you've never used. Not even a fire drill. Pudos chuckled, then cracked, then howled in an unearthly rage. His human form morphed into that of a monstrous beast with a wolf's head and a man's nearly naked body. In a hilarious parody of modesty, he wore a gold lame may loincloth. We were terrified to laugh. Bye, sweetie, I said, my eyes welling. I might never see you again. Bye, honey, replied Rachel. I might never see you again. We embraced and said, Bye, Caden, before following Pudos at last. So, that's why I'm here. That's why we're here. You might think that we would have been saved due to our sacrifice, but that's not the way things work. Our contracts were as binding here as they were on Earth. As above, so below. The only breaks we've gotten are that we don't have to fight each other. We're both spenders, so we're on the same side. And that we get a glimpse of Caden from time to time, as our friends have gotten promised. He helped our son become an honest and caring man, unspoiled by the power of greed. Did he grow up hating us? No, he barely remembered us. But that's part of the bargain. Our friend told him that we drowned when our cruise ship sank. My next opponent is coming. Tall and reeking. He broadcast a familiar smile. Hello, Max. So wonderful to see you after all this time. My former boss at the hospital, Scrooge 2.0, charges towards me. His bag of money bludgeons me in the chest as I fall to my knees. Before the team can whip me, however, the monster Pluto arrives and devours his head. Blood and gore rain down on me, but I didn't care. I feel baptized by it. Thank you, sir, I blubbered in abject gratitude. Pluto grunts and then leaves my side. Some people are buying stairway to heaven, but not Rachel and me. We chose hell. If you like that story and want to see more, Stay tuned through the spooky season. Remember to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. I'll catch you on the flip side.